Team, we are going to be jumping into the draft, though. Zeke, sorry, I'm taking your toss. We'll see you next time. Every time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but we do have some time. It's 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 game number one, um, so we can talk about Area 77 a little bit. They're a team that overall has changed a few rosters had a big falling off point yato and t leave the squad eventually before when yato and t were still on there they were able to achieve one nact victory but that was when btk wasn't really around that was when some of the big dogs were not competing um after yato and t leave it comes down to gals uh mar cutie um the rest of the team, sorry, having a little bit of a mind blank. We're asking a lot of information. We're on the spot. But now we have this new roster. And last season, they were able to secure a very surprising um, fourth place finish. A lot of people didn't think they were even going to make it to playoffs last season. But they're able to do that. So now they're here. Still some of the same players, but a slightly new roster. We still have Mar. Um, we've got Tarzan here. Iso now joining the squad. We've got Jay. So we have some veterans here as well with Jay and Yureshi, some MPL former veterans. And one of the matches I'm really excited for here, Yue, is Jay versus Shark and Yureshi versus Chicken. Yeah, no, this is going to be a very, very tough series for both of these teams. I think all of them are all-star players, the best of the best. And this time around, A77 has to kind of prove themselves that they can stand up against GG. You said they had a great performance, yes, but they still fell short to the TOB back in those days. But now this time around, they decide to pair up with a few different players, right? Tarzan came from Avalon, now is in A77's roster. Yurishi has kind of been hiding around, joining multiple teams and now landing a home in A77. And just like you're saying, pairing up those international players along with some of the uh, strongest backbones of A77. It's gonna be proven that they can uprise and upset some of these great seeds. But Trex, we're gonna jump into the draft. Wrath, Cece, Matilda getting banned out by the side of GG and the Navarro and Joy gets taken out by the side of A77. Yeah, I want to point something out. Now we're seeing how the big dogs draft, right? And <laughs> we didn't see the Joy get banned much. We didn't see the Nolan get banned much. And it's kind of obsessed because I'm like, listen, I know these picks are meta, man. I know they are meta. Uh, <laughs> these are Ruby's picks that gonna are come feared out. in many parts around the world. And Ooh. when you have teams that can really pull them off, you do have to ban them. And there goes the Joy. There goes the Nolan. The Barats. You know, some of these picks are not going to get through. But first pick, Vexana. And you mentioned the Ruby. I think it's definitely something we see here from Area 7. Yeah, I think it's quite interesting that the side of GG decides to prioritize this Vexana shows that, hey, if they are not being banned out, the side of GG is going to take that no problem. But the response coming out from A77, I do think the Ruby is a great pick, right? We've seen Shark and we've seen Chicken do so extremely well on this hero. If not denied away, it's going to smell a lot of trouble for the side of A77. And other picks coming out to play, it's not going to be the Ruby. They decide to go for the Fredrin along with the Arlot that can be flexed into the Rome and the XP position. Yeah, I mean, and we know Yureshi has the ability to play Arlot very well. Back in uh, yep. spring season last year, he was a monster with it. And now, I mean, I'm sure Jay can use it. There, we haven't seen a Rome that hasn't really been able to use the Arlot very well. So it's a very solid upfront pick. It leaves a lot of things open for themselves. And next, if they want to pick up the gold lane or something or the mid, then it kind of keeps GG guessing on draft. Yeah, I'm guessing they have to. I do think a Ruby can be a good pickup along with the Claude, which has been proven to be one of the best marksmen. But Zia has mm -hmm. always been that guy to pick. A lot of unconventional pick. This time around, they do not opt to go for that. The carry and the Ruby, two signature picks of the season. The strong meta that GG is bringing to the table. It's going to be a hard defend to go against if it was side for the A77. So... After they make their pick, I think they pick up the claw now. Might be the right answer for Air 77 before marksmen start getting banned out. Um, and then it's all And honestly, drafts aren't too far apart. Uh, both of them have a Rome EXP flex in. Um, they both could end up having a gold laner. The only big difference is GG's got their mid and Air 77 has their jungle. I'm mm -hmm. excited to see what their last pick is because I kind of want to start talking about what these possible bans could be because Air 77 has to start thinking. Whoa! Whoa. Whoa. Ooh, yee. That is spicy right there for Mark Cutie in the mid side. Um, I mean, that's definitely Interesting. different. Interesting, yeah. 
Yeah, no, I do think that A77 should pick up the damage dealer in their third slot, right? They have the R lot to flex. They should not go for the XP. They should not go for the roam. Let that pick kind of confuse for the side of GG because GG has that themselves. The Ruby can be flexed onto both positions here. Mm -hmm. So I think the mage being picked up is great. Now the Lu Yi is going to be another thing, right? If they don't even pick up the Lu Yi, it's not getting banned out. You could have wasted GG's ban on a fair miss on a Lilia and pulled that out. The Claude is also available, yeah. but I do think the Claude is going to get taken away. Potentially the Brody also and the Claude on the board the fanny to take away from best players hero pool from a77 i think that's quite smart to defend against something like a louis where she does not have that mobility and that lockdown stun to stop the fanny yeah, I was going to say, I was like, they have to kind of focus on a best player here. I didn't know if, I thought the Fanny might be, they go for the Martis. I was thinking maybe Basha or something a bit uh, bulkier, but yeah, you're right. If you're going to have a Louie mid, you're definitely kind of squishy. You definitely lack mobility and you want to kind of stop best player from picking any hyper aggressive jungle. Um, it's something he's known for. It's something he's good at, but with no Barats, no Frederin, no Martis, no Fanny, he could still go for the Basha or... Go for something real crazy, right? Like go for some more of outlandish assassin or something here. Yeah, I think the Basha could be proven for best player. There's also the Akai if he chooses to go Akai. for that utility. But there's also potential, right? Guinevere? Best player might go for an assassin here. Yeah, the Guinevere yeah. is also available paired up with the Ruby and the knockup coming out from Hoon. That's forcing Purifies left and right for A77. And now they have to decide how they want to draft this comp. Maybe picking up the Ruby them I mean the Guinevere themselves, but no. The 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 Grok comes Grok? out to play once again, Trex? What? I'm guessing I'm guessing Grok Rome, right? Grok Rome. Unless, I mean, of course, it's still flexible, right? <laughs> uh, they could go for Arlot Rome or Arlot EXP or Grok Rome or Grok EXP, but I'm, I'm guessing it's Grok Rome, Arlot EXP, um, which we know you actually has a really nice Arlot, man. Like, he does very well on it. It's very comfortable. Not only that, it gives them some nice front line, some nice CC, some nice protection for this Lu Yi. Mm, and there goes the Guinevere guess. for best player. Um, still one more pick, either an EXP or a Rome for the side of GG. Well, the Grok pick now is a lot more exciting for me, especially with the amount of CC that gaming gladiators have put onto their lineup, right? The Grok can immune a lot of CC on the yeah. first skill, can deny the stuns coming out, and now with Shark on this Chigurul, it's almost like GG's getting countered by the Grok just himself. So A77 is going to prevail in this series. The Grok is going to be soaking up all the CC coming through, but the pick that we've been talking about that has been all so night. successful <laughs> all night. The the Harith gets picked up by ISO and this man has proven that the Harith has done so much, paid the dividends during our last NACT and ISO again, this time picks it up to go against the stun comp coming out from Gaming Gladiators. Definitely predicting that the Purify is gonna be available for the Harith. I mean, it almost makes me, I guess, no, because you build Arla, if you if you play Arla DXP, you can build some damage now, right? Because I'm wondering, like, where's their physical damage? I was thinking mm. maybe they do put Grok in the XP just so he can build a BOD and they make up for that lack or something. But we'll see exactly how it all plans out. I kind of like the draft. Of course, there's the one wild card, the Lu Yi, right? But if mm -hmm. Area 77 can make that work, I think we have a pretty a pretty decent draft here. They do have to watch out for the heavy CC from the side of GG, but um, but yeah, I'm, I'm not too, I don't think it's too one-sided. Yeah, I do think that Mar and Ice are both be taking the Purify. Jay just trying to uh, soak up some of the CC coming out from Gaming Gladiators is gonna be the best case scenario for them. But on the other hand, Gaming Gladiators have the initiation. They have the deciding factor to stun up and combo and combo their stuns here, right? Mm. They have four members yeah. that can stop <laughs> any of the front lines that A77 toss at them. So I also think Gaming Gladiator has a great draft in this series, but ISO with the mobility, maybe it might be too much to handle. The immune of CC coming out from J might be too tough for the stuns to come through. But I still think Gaming Gladiators here, that is a, an extremely strong draft. Yeah, you're, I mean, the, the CC is 
in out insanity <laughs> from GG, man. Even if even if you bait out the implosion, you still have three more ults to worry about. Even if you bait out the I'm offended, you still have three more ults to, to worry about. And literally all of them can combo off of one another. Implosion, yep. Violent Requiem. You got the knockup from the Eternal Guardian, Violent Requiem. You got the Implosion v Guardian. I mean, it's just whatever, you, however you want to <laughs> do it, there's an endless amount of combinations here from GG. Um, so Area 77 has to watch out for that. And you're right, I think we're going to see a lot of purifies. I think we might even see the Louis purify instead of a Louis flicker or something like that. We might see uh, Hareth already works very good with the purify. So that at least they have that going for them. Um, they do have the CC nullification with the Grok and the first skill. Um, so, I mean, there are some possibilities. But let's see exactly how this goes. Probably one of the most anticipated matches of day two. This is game number one, Area 77 up against GG. Yeah, we got the Aliens versus the Gladiators. It's a classic matchup between two of the most cla uh, two, two most renowned teams in the North American MLBB history. And already a good start for the side of A77, bursting Hoon back into the base. This is going to be quite tough. Lu Yi, it's, it's not really that traditional hero that gets sent down onto the mid lane. I do know we have a few mage players that like that hero, but it's rarely, it's, it's pretty rare that any team is picking up this hero at this point of the stage. I mean, I definitely, you're right, but I think people do forget Lu Yi can pack a decent punch, especially in the early game. Um, she can scale very well. Um, the problem is that the big issue with Lu Yi, right, is the lack of mobility. Um, mm -hmm. So, but you're up against a Vexana who also doesn't have crazy mobility. Where Vexana shines, the CC she supplies, the Eternal Guardian she supplies. So, it's not like Mark Cutie has to worry too much about like keeping up with rotations. Um, the major problem for Mark Cutie is going to be not getting picked off by members of GG. Yeah, and you know, for the side of Mark Cutie and the A77, they do have a lot of magic damage. And going back to what you said in the draft, it, it definitely feels like A77 is lacking quite a bit on the physical department. The R lot, yes, can be building a little bit of damage, but it's still going to be quite tough now. To look at some of the emblems you have Harith on the festival of blood which is quite interesting paired up with the carry that both are taking that utility spell so going to be some trades going on to the far side of the map and it's quite interesting that gg is setting up camp onto the top side gg does pop to purify so they get that out before the turtle best Ooh. player able to hint out in the bush get the violent requiem off onto tarzan cutie and tarzan cutie goes down first blood over to fly chicken we're actually trying to dash back. Best player going to be able to work away at this turtle, but with a jungler down already, that's going to be an easy turtle for the side of GG. Yeah, it's a blind dash coming out from best player, getting that hook and a, a flicker play Beautiful. coming out from Jay. Wait a second, a lot of damage does come down on Mark Cutie. Fight Chicken able to get the kill. Another one possibly coming down onto Jay. Jay Cutie may be able to just get away before Fly Chicken flickers in. Not today, a double kill over to Fly. Yeah, for a second, the action was too much. I almost thought I was going to be play-by-play uh, play for a second. 3-0 to zero <laughs> is going to be the overall scoreboard. Three minutes in, the advantage is already set for the side of gaming. Gladiators, A77, not really the opening that they were expecting here. They're getting picked off left and right along with the neutral objective. So then now they have to play kind of behind the scenes, back kind of in the, in, in the traditional sense of where a77 actually thrives right they always play down and they can always get uh some of the tower defense that they have been so renowned and uh so known for in this series and this time around it's not going to be too much of a difference i don't think i don't think gg has the lead completely and i feel like a77 definitely has the opportunity to come back in the series already i mean there's definitely some possibilities but with a 2k gold lead already plus three of those all three of those kills into the hands of white chicken one of the new players on gaming gladiators that we kind of have our eyes on seeing how he affects this game um it's going to be dangerous and ruby we already know how meta it can be but getting ahead this early normally it takes because a lot of times ruby gets put into the roam slot where it takes some time to scale but this time it could become a problem very early on yeah, four-man siege coming out from GG onto the bot side. I do think that Jay and Iso has played this quite well. Tarzan oh, here. They're split up. 
Marcuti in a bad spot. Needs to try to find something. Got to capitalize. Marcuti flickers back. Zwan's force does oh. come down. Best player takes a bit of damage. Forced to back off. But Shark also could be the target. And ISO going to be able to pick up the kill. Area 77 finding one. Yeah, beautiful engage, actually. A beautiful implosion coming out from Shark, hitting three of the man uh, from the side of A77, but the follow-up is just not there. There's not enough damage coming out from GG's side. Oh, they keep getting picked off, Jay. Able to just get the flicker through. GG now may be able to get another free turtle here. Yeah, but Tarzan is going to be in position. He has a lot of health, so the 50-50 should be quite available for the side of A77. And look at the reinforcements coming through. Yeah, with the diversion, but a big terrifying on Mark Cutie. Jay Cutie able to take the turtle. A lot of damage on a shark as well. Fried chicken in a bad position. Shark trying to get away, but a big I'm offended on a Tarzan. Shark goes down. Your SQ Cutie able to pick up the kill. Area 77, evening out the gold lane and away to the off lane. ISO gets the 1v1. Area 77 evening the playing field. Dominating throughout the map. You can see Mark Cutie using the ultimate, the Ying Yang to just kind of go forward oh. in the flicker. Final slash, the flicker. Hoon in a bad spot, and Mark Cutie picks up the kill. They take the lead at five and a half minutes. Already an exciting opening from A77 as they dominate their way back into the gold lead. It's a small lead, but nonetheless, it is still a small lead going up against the Gladiators here. Honestly, A77 bouncing back in this series already. It's a pretty good... Uh, term in terms of uh, why they're bouncing back, but it just seems like gaming gladiators they're just not focusing too well here, losing a couple of the small trades here and there. They're gonna be able to take this tower though, which is huge. They swapped lanes, put Zia on the top side, and that could be crucial for GG here. Area 77 also on the bot side now. Both teams looking for moves around the map. Love the Ooh. split cam coming through. Four to three is the overall <laughs> scoreboard. It is tied in terms of the gold leads. And I feel like A77 is, is, is figuring out the strategies of gaming gladiators. This is a team that has been dominating throughout every single series that they had throughout the whole entire last year. And this time around, it doesn't seem like gaming gladiators is getting the dominance that they have had pretty much throughout the, the last few series. Teal play comes in. Mark Cutie also coming to help out the wall from Brock. They are able to defend the tower, but Gaming Gladiators kind of getting back to the roots. We don't need to just take fights. We just need to get objectives. They know what the goal of the game is. In the mid side, though, a lot of damage on to best oh. player. ISO picks up the kill. Purple buff goes over to Tarzan with no retry. GG might have to back off. Yeah, and this uh -oh. is the traditional opening coming out from A77. They love to find man group, but the implosion. Explosion does land down onto Yureshi, but he's able to just dash away in the nick of time. The, the Guardian slams Jay Cutie, takes him out, and now Mark Cutie in trouble as well. One more shot and he's down. Hoon finds the kill, but the turtle does go to the side of Area 77. Gold still at a standstill. Yeah, and this is quite the hype match already. Both teams are battling it out, trading objectives for kills, kills for the objectives. Take a look at some of the items and the gold lead. The Harith is honestly up a little bit of gold, has the Calamity along with the Feather, so he has scaled quite well into play. And honestly, overall, every single member is neck to neck, and I'm surprised that Louis is doing so extremely well, especially going up against the Vexana. Maybe it's because both of those heroes are kind of just sitting ducks and they don't have those dashes available, so it's just quite even across the board. A lot of possibilities. I'm still waiting. We've already seen the diversion be used um, to get oh. Brock back. Oh, wait a second. Big final slash followed up as Mon's force. Best player goes down once again. That's going to be two kills onto him, and Tarzan Cutie now catching up here a little bit. The player level is even, but still we can start to see the scale tip towards Tarzan. Yeah, an A77 sieging onto the bot side, I think it's a great pick off. They do have the top side available for that R lot. Hopefully, he can get the clear, but the flicker implosion stops on the top side. Ooh. A nice kill onto Yureshi there. Another tower down. Zia's doing his job to perfection here. Split pushing, getting a pick off here and there. I mean, GG hanging in the game, and the gold has not gone more than a few hundred to either side in a while now. 
<laughs> yeah, and its towers are three to three. Kills are literally identical, six to six. And it's already 10 minutes in, it's nine minutes in. And, you know, we're getting close onto that mid game where a lot of these heroes are buying items to scale, completing their second onto their third item. So A77 now putting some pressure onto the top side while the members of GG are grouping at mid. So are they gonna be able to defend here? See what they do with the fact, I mean, yes, GG has taken that whole top lane, but Area mm -hmm. 77 has broken through the mid, which in my eyes is a bit more of an advantage. Now they're going to take the top side as well. ISO able to put pressure onto that tower just in time. Wait a second, best player able to get the Violent Requiem onto Tarzan. The implosion as wow. well gets to make it three. Jay Cutie looking for a way to escape, but he's not able to. Mark Cutie finds Shark though. ISO in trouble with his Mons Force. Drops it. Fried Chicken looking for him. Fried Chicken flickers in, but can't get the kill. Maybe a little too deep. Urashi finally goes down. Fried Chicken able to get away safely. Two for one right now. Aries 77 still holding the gold lead, but this should be the first Lord for GG. Yeah, GG has set that team fight up perfectly. The stun combinations are going through, but the Louis ult on the backside, no members are going to go in for this contestion of this first objective. And now the gold lead is just shifting back and forth. It's still tied for both teams, but it seems like in that last team fight though, gaming gladiators, they can just 100 to zero CC whoever. It could be the Fredrin, it could be the Louis, it could be the Grok. He, they're able to take down members of A77 with no problems as long as they sync their stuns and knockups together. I mean, that's definitely been the winning ingredients for GG in these fights mm -hmm. so far. Tarzan continues. First, it was the first turtle. He gets knocked up, found out in the bush. Now, best player, Ooh. even though he's had a slightly rough game, it's still been huge. Reshi takes in a turtle guardian to the face, locked up by Chicken, knocked up by a best player, and Hoon gets the kill. It's looking a little bit rough. Mark Cutie's going to be the next to fall. Tarzan not able to get away. The I'm Offended locks on his Mons Force drop by ISO. He's moving in onto several members, but he's unable to get the kill. And he might just go down, but Tarzan finds best player. It's one for two. They will lose the tower, but at least Area 77 doesn't completely fall. Yeah, it's a huge trade coming out from GG. They had the Lord marching down on the top side and the members of A77 were just distracted trying to defend the mid and now they've lost both of their mid towers. They're in their inhibitor base and it's an even game coming out from both sides. Yeah, it's definitely crucial for Area 77 not to force things, but they do want to fight. Chicken finally goes down. That's the first kill they could get on a chicken. Yeah, and the first kill is going to be one of many. 10 to 9 is the overall scoreboard. 12 minutes in a complete even match. But besides the gaming gladiators, they do have a little bit more real estate to work with. Let's take a look at some of the gold across the board. It definitely feels like the side of A77. They have a small lead in the jungle position, but the mage is belonging to Hoon here with about a 1k gold lead. Ooh, implosion. Paired up with the Violent Requiem, Tarzan does go down. Hoon able to pick up the kill. JQD forced to use a conceal just to try Ooh. to get away here. You're rushing to the backside though with the Vengeance. Comes through, finds Shark. Looking for the next target. Another one! Yureshi's on fire. Z is taken out and ISO knows it's time to shine. Best player forced to run away. Hoon now in a bad spot on the top side of the map. Yureshi! Another kill! Four, three, and four. This is why you got to be careful giving him the R lot. He was a star on it back in spring season, and he's a star on it back in spring season again. Yeah, now A77 is going to be the one that sieges onto the first inhibitor tower. They do end up taking that tower down. They should look to disengage, but getting Final catching slash off. on a fly chicken. Mark Cute able to get the kill. Can they end this here? Shark is back on the map. They don't. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Cutie able to use a diversion to the boss side, clear the waves, Area 77, take back the lead. Mark Cutie said, guys, I am leaving. You guys want to take this boat <laughs> or not? But the members of A77 get left behind quite a bit, but it doesn't seem like any of them are caught off. Now, A77 feels like they have a, some small momentum, right? They're able to kind of push onto this team fight quite well, kind of orchestrating how they want to fight out these fights and best player getting caught once again, but decides to jump away and it's a good disengagement here.
Mon's force does drop from ISO. He's going to use it to zone. Implosion? They try to collapse on a shark, but the implosion connects only on one member, though. The pushback onto several. The big guardian slams down. Shark taken out from ISO, though. Best player might just be next. A double kill for ISO. The final slash. Fried Chicken trying to fight it out. It's a bloodbath. The Mon's force drops, and Hoon drops as well. It's three members for gaming. Gladiators gone, and all five of Area 77 still stand. Yeah, and they're definitely going to look to siege onto this mid side. Now, I don't know if they have the firepower to be able to end this game, especially with just one small wave of minion, but they're definitely trying. It's a four man siege onto this mid side. Louis is coming through. Oh. White Chicken able to get the I'm offended. Tarzan Cutie goes down. Maybe they should have just gone for the Lord, but they decide not to. They want to try to force this right here. But Jay is bursted. Shark back on the field. Area 77 are falling. Did they push it too far? Gaming Gladiators don't come to our base just yet. They came unprepared. The diversion from our Cutie brings them back to the base, and they're okay. But still, they lose three members. Yeah, they lost three members. The Lord is going to be marching down. It seems like the gaming gladiators, though, they're not choosing to opt to go for that objective. Ten seconds are on the death board. I do think the Lord is going to be a much better call here. The top side, look at that wave. It's going to hit onto that tower. I don't know if the chicken is going to be able to get back, but gaming gladiators should be able to get this Lord uncontested. But the Louis ultimate is going to be available here. Yeah, that is huge. We got the replay here. They thought they could end it. And I think this was the big ache they could make this game. Instead of going for the Lord, they're not able to connect. The health bars were just too low. And now, GG back in the game. Area 77 has to make some important decisions here. Lord is going to be marching down towards Area 77. GG has taken a nice lead. Yeah, and this is where GG shines quite a bit right when the lord is marching down they could sink the waves quite nicely and kind of orchestrate this uh battle to siege against the inner towers of a77 but a77 is a team that is full of defense they've always strived to do so extremely well when it comes down to these base uh defenses and this time around i don't think it's going to be a problem for them the lord is marching down onto the top side but a77 they do have the ability to turn things around it's going to be quite tough for gaming gladiators to siege onto this mid tower, but it's still anyone's game at this point. And they have to be careful about the way they engage because one big final slash flicker from Yureshi could be game changing. The Lord able to crash onto the top side. Tarzan trying to make work of it. Mark Cutie there as well. Yureshi back down to the bot trying to clear waves. They just need to defend. Chicken? Try not to lose more than one. The final slash connects onto no one. Yureshi unable to make it happen. Iso drops him on's force. GG unable to completely break through here. Yeah, and this is the first time that I, I feel like GG has struggled a little bit in terms of kind of like the regular season, right? This is kind of the first showing that GG is on kind of a 50-50 defense move. They are having the lead and ooh, coming through in the engagement. I'm offended. Only connects onto Yureshi. Doesn't make a huge difference. The Eternal Guardian drops as well. It's a lot of ults used to no avail. Area 77 should be able to breathe now. They still got a lot of green dots on their side of the map. They're not rushing it, though. They knew the mistake last time over pushing. But this could be their chance to try to look for a play. Iso has the Mons Force back. I'm waiting to see a drop. Fly Chicken hits the I'm Offended. Oh. Iso drops the Mons Force to use it to get away. Tarzan still going to get terrified. Takes a little bit of damage. GG not letting up, though. Yeah, then that's a great purify that gets knocked off the board for the next lord fight and i was kind of going to talk about how a77 both of the teams have been holding on to their spells quite well choosing to disengage and not really over initiating but a77 does not have that purify available on iso and that's going to be quite tough as look at it gaming glider is pushing Ooh, in final slash Ooh. on a best player a lot of damage coming from iso and marcuti best player goes down fly chicken gonna be the next target the vengeance comes through but look at the i'm offended oh. a lot of several members match up with the Implosion, the pushback, and ISO falls. JQ he might just be next. The Immortality pops. The final slash lands back on Azia, but he's got the Spleevy Light Wheel. He's unloading onto Tarzan. Immortality pops as well. GG now closing the grass. They want to lock onto the base, but they need a few more minions. Get the zoom in view. Fly Chicken looking for something. Tarzan there. Air 77 still defending. Mark Cutie still there, but the I'm offended. Locks on again, and two members drop Tarzan against five. 
He's not going to be enough today. GG will be able to close in and take game number one. GG takes game number one. 19 to 17 is the overall scoreboard. A 19 minute close match between the two powerhouses of NACT. 19, 17, and 45 is the overall KDA of the Gaming Gladiators. The dominating performance coming out from pretty much all the members of Gaming Gladiators. I felt like their draft itself was quite beautiful. They had so much knockup, so much CC. And when you talked about trading ultimates, they almost felt like when the ultimates were down, Gaming Gladiators still had so much resources and skills available to lock down and stun the members of A77. I, I still can't get over the fact that Air 77 pushed that last push, man. You know, and I caught some of the player cams as well. ISO knew after they failed, the, one of the player cams went to ISO and he's kind of laughing. He's like, man, like you could just see it, like we shouldn't have gone for it. Like just knew it was kind of a mess up there. Um, mm -hmm. And those are the small decisions, right? And that's where GG comes out on top. You know, Zeke actually said it, cool, collective, effective, and that's what GG is right now. And they're able to get through the bad times and still come out on top with the win. Yeah, they capitalize on the mistakes that A77 have, but this doesn't prove too much that, you know, A77 did make a mistake, but they were pretty much right there in the series. If they just played that fight a little bit different, had a little bit more different shot calls, it could have gone both ways, honestly. But Gaming Gladiators able to take the very first game of this series. 1917 is the overall KDA, and quite convincingly, especially in the last few team fights, popping ISOs purify was a huge, uh, a huge thing for uh, the Ruby to be able to get the I'm offended off and then proceeding to go for another re-engagement when that purify is unavailable for their highest damage carry. Yeah, I mean, overall, I think a lot of players played well on the side of GG, but I think Chicken did very good in the laning phase, able to just go deathless, but Zia as well, man, we saw a lot of uh, the split pushing early on when Area 77 was really hitting the gas and pushing game gladiators like against the wall because of Zia and because of Shark kind of moving around the map. Um, they were able to really kind of alleviate the pressure and take back some towers here and there, kind of stop the minions from becoming too much and kind of make it so Area 77 didn't close things out too soon. Yeah, and this game really proves that both of these teams are really strong contenders. I, I, I love the word contenders, Trex, and I use it quite often, but contenders I feel like are gonna be the top four in the bracket. And A77 and GG are both teams that do represent that group of players, right? They are contending for the championship, contending for the opportunity to go across the seas and win lots of money. And I do think Gaming Gladiators here have a strong performance, but A77, man, caught us in surprise. We knew that they had the power in them to have this upset coming through and they were so extremely close here, Trex. And now we're going to be taking a quick look at the big moment, the replay where Area 77 was so close into the grass. This is the fight that they won. This was the big turnaround. This was the Lord they should have been able to take. Yeah, and you can take a look at a lot of the ultimates and setups being put onto GG's side. The stuns, the snares all coming through. The Xenom Force popping off. It felt like ISO and them had the strategy available. And this is the turn of fight that was unfortunate. Z is able to get away and members of A77 are just pretty much trading blow for blows underneath the towers, tanking and soaking so much damage. And it ended up being the downfall of A77 here as all the members been taken off the board. Yeah, I mean, what what a moment. And that's, you know, you see it all the time. It's like you get a big fight at a Lord and you're able to maybe close out. I just felt like their health bars were a little bit too low. If they were all like 100%, yeah, go for the finish. Go for the 3v2. Go for the 4v2. But they just didn't have that then. And GG, on the other hand, they took things slow. Yes, at the end here, they do close out, but they knew that they had all five members. They knew that they had everybody stocked and ready to go. Yeah, it's a tough series for A77, honestly. It's a very, very tough matchup for them, and I think they did extremely well. But also, Gaming Gladiators, they proved to themselves that, hey, like, we are still in this 
series. Doesn't matter if we lose an inner inhibitor. Doesn't matter if the strategies did not work and give them an advantage in the early game. The late game strategies, the mind games, just, you know, pushing out targets here and there and capitalizing on the mistakes that A77 have just prevailed them to go on to getting that point that they're looking for and hopefully turning this series into a two to zero. Sure, and I think, um, I mean, if they're, you know, you mentioned two zero and I'm wondering like Area 77, can they pull off what they just did again? Like, can they almost win and this time just not mess it up? Was that just a good game for them, right? And I think game two is where we're really going to have the deciding factor of how close are they to GG in power level, right? Because if Area 77 can come into this game again and put up as good of a fight and almost win like they did and maybe even win, I think it's huge. It's huge speaking on to the rest of the season because Area 77 is also only going to get better, only going to get smoother in their gameplay. And it means there's there's a lot of possibilities when it comes playoffs right uh it's it's literally week one and we're seeing a lot of things happen so area 77 I'm excited to see how they jump into this next game um i want to talk a little bit about the lou yi pick the lou yi pick <laughs> actually ended up not being horrible right i think it worked pretty well for them um if used at the right time it seems like something that could maybe be viable in the future yeah it's definitely a raw element that a77 had in that last series the louis pick was picked in the very first phase and actually worked out quite well right there was plenty of opportunities where the louis came with the ultimate the divergent paired up with the grok they were able to kind of out macro and come back into the fights quite easily and we didn't get to see a lot of great disengages from the louis but definitely that ultimate has been proven to be very useful now Going into game two, Trex, the Joy and the Arlot have both been taken off the board. Are we going to see a Barats ban this time around? Because I do think that hero should be prioritized either on the first pick or even the first ban. I mean, with Area 77 on the blue side, the drafts could definitely change a bit, right? We know that GG banned out the, uh, the Barats last time. Um, so I think it's kind of up to whether Area 77 thinks it's thinks they want to first pick it, right? And does GG want to give it to them? Yeah, and the next ban for the side of uh, A77 is going to be that Novaria, the long range mage. They don't, they just don't want Hoon to be playing on that. Yeah. But the Vexana is still available. I'm not sure. If A77 think that the Vexana is actually a good hero at mid, because when they take the Purify on the Herit, they're able to kind of just jump onto the backside, deal tons of damage, and get away quite nicely here. Gaming Gladiator said, no, we're not having that dinosaur in our match today. That is going to be shelved for the next series. Yeah, for sure. Not, I mean, but still... Big respect for that Arlot ban, right? Um, on Yureshi, Yureshi was a menace on it. Um, and that itself is going to open up some things. So, Joy open. Does Area 77 ban out the Nolan again like they did last game? Um, do they want to fight for it? And then, as you mentioned, the Vexana. Um, it's kind of up to the side of GG. You know, what are they going to leave open depending? Um, both these teams are definitely... It just feels a lot more methodical looking at these two teams, the way they're drafting, um, because they value a lot of these uh, quote-unquote meta picks compared to some of the drafts we've seen earlier today where things were a lot more open and some things were never even picked even though they were left open. Um, you definitely see, I think, these two teams find these things a lot more crucial and uh, letting something slip through the cracks could be game-breaking. Well, this time around, there's a lot of flex picks that are still available, right? The Ruby can be slotted in the Rome and the XP position. The Matilda has been also let go so far. I might bite my words. GG still has a last ban available. And yes, both of those heroes are going to be available. Maybe a first pick Matilda potentially coming out from A77 or a Ruby to deny that pick away from Chicken. I mean, I think, yeah, the Ruby, Chicken on the Ruby was gross. <laughs> Um, and not a lot of not a lot of teams are picking an EXP right now, which I kind of like it in the EXP lane. Um, yes, it can take a little bit of time, but once it's involved in team fights, you still get all the bonuses of that you had of it as a roam. Um, but you can also still pick some sort of heavy engage roam if you want, um, or you can go for something like the support roam and still have that very sustainable front liner um, that's not exactly a diver. Now, finally, we're going to be getting the first picks, and with Vexana open, um, with the Ruby open. Ooh, Whoa. Area 77 never seems to uh, surprise, surprise us. Like, 
<laughs> That's they, they don't go for any of the value picks that we were that we would talk about. They go for the Claude instead, which Claude is a monster right now. This is true. Mm -hmm. Well, here's the thing in terms of a Claude first pick strategy, right? A lot of the teams when they are drafting, either they are looking to draft the best in slot position, or they're looking to counter right or they could look to flex so for example they take the ruby that's a flex first pick they take mm -hmm. the claude it is definitely that blind strong pick that is good against majority of the user the fredrin comes into play and that is pretty much the same exact thing take the best jungler that's available in this option paired up i think a magic damage dealer is quite good and hoon takes my word the vexana gets put onto play We've seen Hoon do so well with the knockups coming through, and I don't think this time around is going to be any different, especially paired up with the CC coming out from the Fredrin. Hmm. I mean, yeah, it's definitely a problem. Uh, maybe, maybe Area Seventy Seven wants to let them get a lot of CC. Maybe try to pick up something like the Diggy this time. I think it's a little early for that. But uh, yeah, Ruby picks definitely viable. I definitely don't think you. I definitely don't think you want to give the Vex and the Ruby again. <laughs> Over to Matilda? GG. Plus, you just lost the Fredrin. Matilda is open. Definitely a possibility for the side of Area 77. Yeah, the Matilda is available. I do like that pick, but I don't think picking the Matilda and the Ruby is going to be the best option. And no, they do not go for the Ruby. They Matilda. go for it. Ooh. They they go for a trade. The the Chigrill gets picked up here and the Minotaur gets picked up by Shark. And it's quite interesting that the Matilda gets let go in this draft. And also the Ruby has not been up to play, but I can understand why Shark has readied up this Minotaur, right? We saw earlier on the, the, the Minotaur was able to kind of defend and, and use the knockup to cancel out the Blazing Duets of the Claude, which is going to be proven quite good. And we also saw the matchup between the Tick and the Minnow. The Minotaur was able to win in the, in, in the series against Bloodhounds and Night Horde. So I feel like that is a solid pick coming out from Shark. Now, the second phase bans are on the table. The Bruno gets taken out, so I, Zia does not have one of his favorite heroes. But the Yu Zong gets taken off the board, meaning I think Chicken is probably looking to deny some of the picks coming off of Yurishi and taking the Ruby himself. I mean, yeah, and he gets first pick here, so if Eri 77 doesn't ban out the Ruby here, it's an easy slot in for the side of GG. Um, Area 77 also still need a mage. Maybe they go for something like the Lu Yi again. It seems like they're not scared to completely think outside of the box here. Um, we need a marksman for Zia, which I wouldn't be surprised Zian seeing Zia on the Harith. Um, it's definitely nothing mm. that's outside of his realm. He's played mage before. I think he'll be comfortable on it if he wants to pick that. Um, so yeah, the carry and the and the Bruno ban are, are valid, but Zia's got a pretty deep hero pool overall. I could even see him picking up something crazy like the Beatrice tricks or you know anything anything he wants really i feel pretty comfortable that brody also still open i really really like the brody pick and i kind of wish that uh, some of the teams are going to be picking up the brody i think the early game that he has in his kit does a lot <laughs> of damage and even when he's down in gold he could still chunk out a lot of towers he has the mobility you know paired up with his auto attacks and it, you know he's a smooth hero and just like we're talking about we do get to see the brody in action i think that's great going up against the, the the Claude. And I think it's quite good going up against Tigreal where when he comes forward, he could just stun up the Tigreal and bounce away in that team fight. Now the response coming out from A77, Faramis is still available. We talked about the yeah. Lugi, the Purified Lilia uh, has been quite popular, can come out to a show, but they are still missing that XP and their mage. Yeah, so what do we put Yureshi on here? Um, I think they pick up the Ruby, right? Mm -hmm. They just pick I do it up? think so too. Oh, no. Nope. They're like, no, we don't care about no Ruby. Fly Chicken gets a free Ruby now. Um, a little surprising. Maybe he or goes X. for something else though. Xborg's a possibility too. Yeah, you know, the Lapu Lapu I think is just to push out Hoon. And I think Hoon's been quite effective on the Vexana, especially with no mobility. He's just moving around quite well in a lot of these team fights. But now a Lapu Lapu is going to be in his face. The Bravest Fighter stands paired up with the mean ability that he has. Should be able to body Hoon out of majority of this team fights. And also Lapu Lapu does quite well against the early game that Brody has, right? He, the Brody is able to scale quite well, level eight, building up maybe one or two Ooh. items and that's where the power spike comes into play for lapu lapu for the response fried chicken no ruby Yo. this time around the one punch man 
I like I like the Paquito too because you see it a lot. Paquito's damage, like the combo, is so quick that it's great against Lilia because a lot of time Lilia won't even have time to click the black shoes. Like you can take out if you're quick enough or you catch them off at the wrong time, you can kill the Lilia before black shoes even pop. Same thing with uh. ISO, you could work, make the Claude, like, before you even have time to hit your BMI, boom, you're already gone. So, and we know Fried Chicken likes to be aggressive. Like, yes, he's he's okay with the more sustainable EXP laners, but I think where Fried Chicken really, really shines is when he's able to look for angles, be aggressive, and pick up kills. Yeah, and he could also cancel the implosion coming out from TIG, so that's another problem that A77 has to deal with. Now, we have seen the pack today on the xp lane sir bossy played it in the bloodhound series unfortunately they were not able to get the victory that they were looking for but just like you're saying the matchup between the pack and the lilia is quite good here but take us in trex all right it's match point for gaming gladiators up against area 77 will this be the last match of day two or will area 77 take us to game three yeah, I think the aliens this time around, they got to come out with a better ship, right? They got to come into this game strong, get the early game advantage, and I do think they have the ability to do so. Now, the gladiators, though, have proven to have a really strong late game strategy, right? It seems like almost every late game they're able to win, even if they are down in gold. But pick off right here, Jay, already chunked quite low against an early game Vexana. Seems like gaming gladiators has the map in their favor already most definitely i think there's a a lot of possibilities for both teams here area 77 with the basha should have some nice movement some nice rotations able to stop any early aggression that gaming gladiators wants to bring possibly able to maybe help stop gg from getting some early game ganks and with the way that area 77 played last game i i have a feeling that it might because gaming gladiators like the the trio in mid best player shark and hoon they normally get in team's face especially here in na mm -hmm. so after taking a little bit of an almost loss it may slow down gg's pace a bit yeah but this time around if you take a look at the gold lane you can see the Claude kind of jumping behind and that's kind of how the matchup is going to go right the Claude is going to struggle one versus one against the brody but in our last series we had the harith able to solo kill onto the gold side so that's one advantage that a77 does not have they kind of just need the Claude to be able to stand against himself while the other members of a77 look for an engagement on the opposite side of the map and area 77, nobody going to get any kills this early in the game. It's a slow pace to start. Area 77 keeping up with the rotations. First turtle oh. on the map, and everybody seems ready to fight it. Down in the XP lane, still a little bit of action, though. Hoon goes down. Yureshi looking for another one. Yureshi should fall as well. It's an EXP laner for a mage. Oh. Super Shark, though, taking a little bit of damage. Tarzan looking for the final hit. Can he get it? Fight Chicken able to disengage, but he should be out of commission for this turtle fight. Yeah, no commission indeed. Tarzan unable to close off that last kill. Seems like both teams are looking to disengage, setting up for another day on this objective. And I do think when the buffs go down, both teams are going to be looking to fight this out. A little bit of a lead coming out from Gaming Gladiators. I think the top side is going to be due to that. But GG's are going to be the one that is going to start up this objective. All right, a lot of damage. No one's fury from Shark does land on, and everybody just piles oh on the dog pile on to Yureshi Cutie, getting revenge for the kill earlier. Now Turtle still up. Jay looking for an angle. Tarzan hanging out in the bottom bush right now, maybe waiting for the engage. Shark smells something wrong. Going to move on, try to delay him. Best player also taking his time. Hoon able to get the knock up onto Tarzan Cutie. Fly Chicken coming over the backside for best player. Able to get the Turtle, and now they collapse onto Mar. Mar in trouble. Fly Chicken dashes in, and the kill locks in for Hoon. They take out Mar Cutie, and Jay Cutie may just be next. Best player picking it up. And I just want to say that GG's uh, strategy of just stunning and knocking up and chaining all those CCs have been proven to quite difficult to counter. You can see they're able to single out specific targets. Doesn't matter who it is. The Lapu Lapu can go Bravest Fighter, but if he doesn't activate the CC, I mean, he's not going to be able to get that. And now GG has the lead onto the mid. The kill is in their favor. And even on the top side, Z is able to grab up a lot of gold. Oh, a little bit of damage on a shark there. 
Dark Soul able to back off. Throw out comes the Blazing Duet. Finally, Iso picking up a kill, trying to move on to Zia next. Tarzan under the tower takes a couple shots. Mark Cutie's going to try to come in for the cutoff. Whoa. Zia now cornered. Can they find the pick here? Zia able to dash through, and they do not find. Ooh, eight. Yes, Mark Cutie. Gets it in. Down on the boss side as well. You're actually up against Fly Chicken in the 1v1. You're actually forced to back off this time. Fly Chicken, close the difference. The flicker comes in. And you're actually just gets away. Game and Gladiators leading by 1,200, 5 to 4. Yeah, it's a one for one trade onto the top side. But ISO is able to kind of go victorious on that trade. He's been surviving, and the Blazing Duets also picked off. Uh, some of the members so right now East 77 i feel like is in quite a good position they are down in gold but i do think that iso has had a great lane so far early on i mean it's a 1400 lead for gg we saw the same thing for mary 77 last time and and my the f to be honest this is the first time i feel like gaming gladiators has a chance to lose a game in a while. No one's fury does come down. A lot of damage onto JQD. Zia able to stack up. But as I was saying, is Area 77 might definitely be slightly below GG right now. Like GG has the advantage. But I don't think we've seen GG tested this hard in a while in North America. Can see the play coming from Jay Cutie, looking for the implosion, looking for the play. Best player able to secure the turtle. A lot of damage does come on to Shark. Jay Cutie working the angle. You're actually with the bravest fighter. Mark Cutie goes down, but Shark falls as well. The damage coming in from Fly Chicken. He does get the knockout strike onto Yureshi, though. Yureshi in a little bit of trouble. Jay Cutie trying to come in and help out. Bahoon able to delay the advance. Area 77 now on the run. Tarzan taking a little bit of damage. Oh, no. The Appraiser's Wrath comes down. The Terrify, the knockup, and Tarzan taking out a mega kill for Fly Chicken. I feel like the gaming gladiators is all about the wombo combination right now. The knockup is just a little bit too much to handle. Last game, they had the Guinevere, the Vexana for the two man knockup. And this time around, they got the Minotaur, the Fredrin to have that CC knockup chain Ooh. paired up with Fried Chicken here. And now the bot side. Chicken trying to go a little bit aggressive, but don't Yurashi. think Yurishi is <laughs> able to take care of that business. The confidence in Fly Chicken right now, man. Half a bar of health, and he's like, yeah, I'm hanging out. I'm going to clear this wave real fast. <laughs> they do collapse onto the boss side. Fly Chicken might finally go down. Does he get away? No, the flicker. Yurishi able to pick it up. Up in the top side, a little bit of action as well, but nothing too major. But they finally get a kill on a Fly Chicken, which is crucial because he was sitting at 4 0 and 2. Yeah, that's a 400 gold shutdown for the side of A77. Able to get that kill back into their favor. It's a 1k difference, so both teams still have that. It's still anyone's game at this point. And I really want to take a look at ISO's item, right? Zia, of course, on the Brody, has the ability to go into that early and mid game. But once it gets to the late game, if both marksmen have the same exact gold, the side of uh, the side of A77 is going to have a slight advantage because Claude just has that mobility, has that late game shred. But if Zia is going to be the one that's up in gold, it's going to be hard for Iso to look for any engagement because he's going to get two shot by Zia here. And look at the Yureshi. He, Yureshi cuts double into the bottom lane. And now he's going to be a little bit ahead in this fight engagement. A little bit in front of Fly Chicken. Are they going to maybe set a bait for him here? Fly Chicken knows. He smells something in the water. He decides to not to advance. He waits until the rest of his team has vision on Area 77. This feels like a lord right here. Like everyone's grouping up just for a seven-minute turtle right now. This is a game that we're watching. Best player still working the Lord. Implosion happens on a three members. Tarzan able to get it, but the Eternal Guardian comes down. And now Yureshi's in trouble. JQ to taken out. Yureshi caught up in between four members. Takes enough damage. A best player finds the kill. Area 77 take the turtle, but at what cost? Yeah, it seems like A77 is unable to get a lot of these fights going into their favor, especially when both teams are grouped up as members of five, right? A77 feel like oh, they have the fight opportunity. Chicken. ISO? Fight chicken, fight chicken, fight chicken. On to ISO, ISO with the blazing duet still taking out mid gun blazing. Yeah, that's a huge shutdown for the side of Gaming Gladiators. Able to take care of ISO, giving him his first death on the board. And it just, again, once it seems like A77, they cannot fight these group 5 versus 5. Shark is just getting too many knockups. And the side of Gaming Gladiators just have so much CC available to single out individuals. 
Okay, Fly Chicken goes down. Zia takes a tower, though. Did Yureshi fall as well in the boss side? No. So nope. Area 77 finds something, but still, GG is this methodical, man. They got the scalpel out. They're cutting away piece from piece from Area 77 right now, tower by tower, until they're down to nothing but bones. Yeah, and you can see a small lead still for the side of gaming gladiators. The people of Area 77 are grouped up onto the top side, but the reinforcements are coming through. Jay, trying to cut off the angle, and I feel like A77, they're definitely going to try to get this tower here. Iso able to BMI away. The tower does fall, though, so that's a mm. plus for Area 77. <laughs> Yeah, that's definitely a plus there. They do need all the advantages that they could get. Once again, it seems like the engagement's coming through. Both teams disengaging. Now, let's talk about some of the strategies that A77 could use to kind of get back onto this game. I think Hoon is going to be a very big player for them to try and shut down and maybe try to keep Chicken at bay, right? Putting a little bit of pressure onto his thing because he's going quite aggressive in pretty much majority of these clears. Chicken having a little bit of trouble on the bot side. The 2v1, yeah. Fly Chicken unable to compete there, but they're going to start rushing this Lord because they know Tarzan Cutie is far away. Area 77 may not be able to make it in time. No, they will not. Hoon able to secure that one for the team. Area 77 just got to hang out and wait now. Yeah, it's going to be a free objective for the side of GG's. The Lord is going to be marching down onto the bottom side, the far lane here. Right, the side of GG. I do think the strategy for them is to group up on mid and try to go for a siege while this Lord is popping down on the boss side. But Guap's here getting chunked a little bit. I do think they're not going to have enough damage here. And A77 looking for a defense going up against the first Lord of the game. All right, Lord coming soon down the bottom lane. I don't think GG is going to be able to finish things just yet. Area 77 does have the shred with ISO. Um, it's not like ISO's fallen too far behind in gold or anything. He's 1-1-1. One, one, and one. Um, Hasn't taken too many deaths. Possibilities are still there. And GG still has to be careful about the way they engage. One big set from JQD could be game-changing. And GG's looking for the engagement here. The Lord is marching down on the bot side. I do know that the purifies are available for the side of A77, but I just don't know if the purify is going to be enough to deal with this constant CC coming out from the side of GG. Best player looking to Ooh. go in for a little bit. A lot of damage just by himself chunking out to the members of A77. Uh, with a, with Alilia, though, you have great siege defense, man. You lay down on the glooms, you're able to burst down the Lord. That paired up with ISO. They should be okay. GG, oh. though, once again, the scalpel's out. We just cut away tower by tower. Yeah, and a 3k gold lead 11 minutes in. GG is still trying to push the lead. It does feel like A77 has lost a little bit of gas, but I think they might have it figured out. The two man units of ISO and uh, and J is on the backside. So if GG does get collapsed here, it might smell trouble, but it seems like ISO, they're opting to go for a split push strategy. And I think this is great. The side of gaming gladiators, they're really trying to force this Ube strategy of just sinking all the ultimates up together. Iso takes another tower onto the bot side, but the trade from GG is just a little bit too good. And he's going to have to be careful, though. Fly Chicken is on to him. He needs to get back quickly. Should mm -hmm. be okay. Chicken just has to defend. Take out the minions. So well played. And if Iso can keep doing that, kind of dancing around, it's very similar to what we saw from Zia last game, alleviating the pressure, you know, kind of bleeding out the wound a little bit, letting the swelling go down. And that's what Area 77 needs to do. They got to try to hang out. They're in it for the long haul at this point. Um, yep. Still, gold lead not too far ahead, man. 4K is very comebackable for any team, especially teams at this caliber. And we're inching into this kind of late game, right? But it seems Ooh. like they're going in. Iso with the Blazing Duet on the backside. Zia taking a whole lot of damage. Iso, BMI's back and is instantly found from Fly Chicken. Shark picks up the kill. Zia finds Yurashi. Tarzan next to be on the chopping block. Terrified. Taken out. Now it's nothing but Mark Cutie and Jay Cutie. Cutie Gang not looking too good right now. Fly Chicken trying to close the distance. Black Shoes pops, so it brings Mark Cutie back into all members. Welcome to home. Gaming Gladiators is here. Knock, knock, FBI. They're kicking down the door right now. A terrified Jay Cutie falls. Mark Cutie going to be next. Fly Chicken, Fly Keto, Puck Keto. Take them to their graves. GG takes game number two. 
And just like that, GG is able to take this game in a in a more close fashion, right? It's a 14 minute match, a dominating performance again from Gaming Gladiators. I was about to say, the, the longer this game goes, seems like A77 does have a lot more hope with the Claude, but the early game damage from the Brody is just a little bit too much to handle. And again, Gaming Gladiators, they have the IQ decision to go and merge onto that top side, catching out multiple members of A77 and completely dominating in that team fight. KD 15, 7, and 31 is going to be the overall scoreboard. Lots of assists coming out from Gaming Gladiators. And I would just say the rotations that they had, especially when it came down to that mid and late game, the strategy, it was just too much for the side of game, uh, for the A70s, the aliens to handle. Yeah, the aliens are shot down from the sky today. Gaming Gladiators coming to play. I mean, it's game one was close. GG, though, mm -hmm. definitely controlled and shows who's boss and why they're here. Um, average damage is completely unloading compared to Area 77. And even the gold per minute just completely collecting throughout the laning phase. And we saw the difference between Area 77 and GG. When Area 77 was winning in game number one, GG... I mean, was almost keeping the gold tied throughout the whole game. Compared to GG, when they were escaping with the win, they immediately turned it into a 3-4k gold lead. Yeah, and it's an extremely dominating performance coming out from GG here, able to take the 2-0 victory of A77, which has won in their last series. So now, A77 is going to be pushed onto that fourth position while uh, GG is going to be in the lead for the very first one. The brackets are already showing and we got the handsome man Zeke back into play. Zeke, how you doing, man?